have 25 must be uh, registered to that social health insurance fund. It is mandatory. And when that happens, they continue to say that when after you have been forced to register to that fund, if you don't pay, uh, if you're not up to date with your payments to that fund, then you will be unable to access health care. So this is in contradiction to our right to health. In the Constitution, our right to health is not conditional. It, there, there is no place under Article 43 where it says you can you you have uh, you are entitled to the highest standard uh, highest standard of care when it comes to healthcare, but only if you have money. If you don't have money to pay to this thing that we have forced you to be a part of, then you can't be treated anywhere. That that is ridiculous. So our right to health is under threat of infringement. That is the other thing you're going to fight for tomorrow. Another one is our right to privacy. We we saw that they they uh, even before the president withdrew the bill, they had done away with the proposal that would have given KRA like literally full access to almost if not all of our personal data. And uh, I had shared something along the lines of we shouldn't be too excited to see them remove that provision because what we need to realize is these guys have been after getting to our data for quite a while. In 2021, KRA started social media monitoring. You can Google and you will see it is true. Social media monitor monitoring by KRA was um, started in 2021 and they have been monitoring your social media since then. It went all through 2022, and last year, 2023, they now introduced the revenue, revenue service assistance or officers, something like that, revenue service assistance, I think. Um, these are officers that were trained by the KDF. So these are military-trained KRA officers that were introduced to us, I think, towards the end of last year, somewhere thereabout. So you can already see they are monitoring you in very many ways and that was in 2021 they've started monitoring you 2022 they admitted that they have started uh, incorporating technology blockchain ai and such like so that uh, it helps them with their checks their background checks and their monitoring of you and your data to know who is not paying taxes or who should be paying more taxes and then last year they introduced the paramilitary the military trained care officers are you seeing the direction they are trying to go so you can imagine if that provision had gone through, if they had said give KRA access to all of your personal data, how would that end up with military trained KRA officers and them monitoring you anywhere you post anything on social media? It's not a good look. And if it has not gone through now, best believe they will find a way to try and bring it into fruition. So that's something we have to be very careful about. We are fighting for a right to privacy. Another thing, you saw how Safaricom was, was snitching on people during the protest and even after. Make noise. Your right to privacy is at stake, even with the Social Health Insurance Act. Remember I said the Social Health Insurance Act was, packed, was passed together with four other laws. That was the Primary Health Care Act, the Digital Health Act, and the Facilities Improving Funding Act, something like that. The Social Health Insurance Act, in, uh, con, in, in, there is a clause there that says that the government um, intends to digitize the whole health sector. In fact, the, uh, in the same act, they say that as much as they are forcing you to be part of the shift, you cannot be part of it until you have a digital ID. And this digital ID is something that they've been trying to get us to get for a long time. Remember Huduma number? but we said no to that and the court supported us. And we almost had the same victory with the Maisha number last year. It was supposed to be launched in December, but the court said no, because there were some digital rights groups that went and made very good arguments on our behalf, God bless them. But what happened is that in February this year, was it February? I think so. The courts then came and said, oh, you know what? We changed our minds. We think the government can go ahead and, and, and launch the Maisha number. So Maisha number is happening. So you can see they're doing many things here and there all towards one goal. They've got Maisha number going. And here, on the other hand, they've already said um, you must have a digital ID to be registered to the SHIF. And as long as you're above 25, you must be registered to the SHIF. And on top of that, they are going to digitize the whole health sector. 
under the Social Health Insurance Act and the Digital Health Act. So all of your data is going to be accessible by these people and they have not told us what measures, if any, they are going to put to make sure our data is safeguarded. The other day we heard of them uh, talking about selling some of our data to, to Europe, God knows for what purpose. So you can imagine very delicate, sensitive health data of all Kenyans being uh, stored and, and handled by this government. You remember e-citizen site hack? I, I need you to learn. I need you to learn. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, basically, what I'm trying to say is there are so many um, rights and fundamental freedoms that are at risk because of what this government is doing under the radar, not just on the finance bill. And that's the thing we need to be most aware of. Even as we go tomorrow, we need to know we are not just talking about what they had in the finance bill, but we are fighting for all the rights that they are trying to infringe and curtail. So let's go, people. We've got this. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, uh, Santi Sana, thank you so much. Um, let's talk law. You have really educated us. The only thing I'm going to say, the one thing I'm going to say is I'm not particularly opposed to um, having a unified identification system because it makes no sense to have NHIF, your ID, your passport, your insurance, your like different, like NSSF, all those various government services requiring different identification profile so personally as me i don't mind having a unified identification system because then it also allows us to which is the main goal of our of our movement right now is to enforce accountability if you have a unified identification system it then also streamlines our ability to hold people accountable because now you have a system where one person owns a hundred companies they are doing business with 90 companies and stealing from the government with the 90 companies that they own and there's no way for the government to know because we don't have a unified system so for me my issue is not the data sharing between kra and all those things my issue is a safaricom being allowed to track us and pick us from our homes or someone was picked when when they sent goods to pick up Osama, they went to his house in Kasarani, and they also went to his hiding spot in Parkland, which is absolutely unnecessary, and it's just fucking insane, okay? It, they should not be able to do that. Osama, what does Osama do other than bully people on his timeline? That's all he does, right? He's basically generally every single day a peaceful loving individual that fixes our computers and our phones other than the occasional weekly occurrence of him bullying someone he is not as evil as jedimas or, ba or, or baraza or bado uh, william ruto he's not as evil as this other nigga what's this dude's name fuck um uh, this guy babu Oweno. Um, this other woman, what's her name? The woman who shot somebody, Aisha Jumwa. To be honest, uh, Osama's evil is like one out of ten, and these people are like 79 out of 10. But they had two, two squads of four cars each in the locations they thought he would be at because Safaricom enabled them. So I don't have a problem with a unified identification system i have a problem with a surveillance system whereas where now kra can pull your mpesa records and decide now you owe us this amount of tax because you spent this amount of money at milan which is also owned by another thief that is what i have a problem with and i think we need to all just educate ourselves on what the correlation between surveillance and identification like what is identification and what are the pros and cons of it but what is also surveillance and what we need to avoid. But yes, I 100% agree with you. Thank you so much. Um, let's talk. I will allow the next speaker.